Hello everyone, Dynadon here with a progress report on my workhorse air. Uh, my last video I mentioned getting a ordering up a new cable and uh, changing out my antenna cable that is for uh, a better quality one and I wanted to also bring down an SWR meter it's an old Radio Shack unit. Um, the frequency range for the air band is 118 megahertz to 136.975 so just shy of 137 mid range would be about 127 and a half so those are the three uh, areas that you want to check at so what I did is uh, this is the original antenna that went back into the tail and was hooked up to the antenna base back here and I pulled it I used it to pull the new cable through and I reattached the new one in the back but first I tested the old cable wired it off the radio, turned it on, and the numbers were not good at all. At 118 kilohertz, it was about 2.3 SWR, and that's that's getting up high. I mean, they say anything under 2.5 is okay. But when I got to 127.5, it pegged the meter, meaning that dial was clean off over here to the side, even after calibrating. Each time you do this, you have to set this meter in calibration mode, key the mic and adjust this knob over here until that needle is at the very top of that meter where it says Cal, Cal HL high low. So you zero it out there and then you flip the switch back down and you key the mic and then you get your reading and that's what these readings were. So again at 118 Hertz it was 2.3. Uh, they say under 2.5 is okay but preferably in the ones. Um, anything over 3 is bad. That's uh, in the red as you can see there. Anything over three is no good. So two and a half is not very good. But when I <clears throat> put it on 137, uh, it was at 3.0. And that's not good either. So, so I swapped the antenna out. I did use a, uh, an adapter cable to go from the radio to the meter. Um, or I used the antenna cable, the old antenna, to hook up to this side because this takes a um, connections for a CB radio. So this is an actual CB radio antenna and the connection in the tail is this style. So so I use the antenna to plug into the radio into the meter and then I got my adapter on here and I have another one of these adapters in the tail so I can hook up my uh, BNC connector in the tail and then this is the new antenna out. So that's antenna out and this is the transmitter in. And these readings were even worse first problem was at 118 Hertz it was low 1.4 where before it was 2.3 so that's better but I couldn't calibrate it the needle I couldn't adjust the needle all the way to the max with the knob it was out of range and then at 127.5 it was completely over range again just like the first one pegged and then the third sit frequency at 137 was 3.1 which is isn't much better than this so, what it tells me is that my antenna, which is a copper piece of solid wire that comes up into the tail, it looks like it's going to be too long. And then the only way to cut that is, is to get the connection inside the fitting in there. It's popper it in. I'll have to drill the popper it's out to pull this whole antenna out of there. Luckily, it's mounted into the bottom of the ground plane, so I can literally pull it out and then trim it. But then you got to put it right back in and to recheck it again. So. It's going to be a it's going to be a crapshoot uh, trying to get that figured out. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find me a, a the, the cable that I used to test the first one at readings was a 75 ohm cable and this this is a 50 ohm cable this is a 50 ohm cable. You can see the the quality of this cable is is way better than than this old uh, CB radio cable. So that's kind of where I'm at. I'm at a standstill with this. I can't do anything with it. The numbers are horrible. So I'll take these home, ponder it, but I'm pretty sure I've got to shorten it. And if i got to take it apart, I'm probably going to buy the correct BNC connector to put back in the tail. And then I'll swap that out, and then I won't need that adapter. But I did need the adapters to get these connections here in order to go from BNC connector to uh, PL259 is what the uh, CB radios use. This is PL259. So so I had to get two adapters for that and I didn't take into account uh, needing one for back there. So, But I was able to test it both ways and, and they're 
pretty bad, pretty sad. Okay, now as for the engine running problem, I'm pretty convinced that it's nothing more because this is the first time I've had the aircraft up over 50 mile an hour or about 50 mile an hour. Uh, this propeller, as you can see, there's not a lot of bite here to send uh, air through there, but I'm sure it's putting some pulsation on this filter. And what it is, is you can see this is the mass air meter. There's the sensor back here. So at 50 mile an hour, the airflow is probably going in here, hitting, and it's causing a, a, a buffering action or a buffeting action across that sensor where that sensor reads from 0 to 5 volts. It can actually go all the way up to 10 volts, but the computer will only recognize uh, frequency uh, voltage inputs of up to 5. If it, but it can go all the way up to battery voltage, a mass air meter can, if you don't know that already. Uh, you can, it's like I mentioned before, you can loosen these, this fitting here and you can kind of turn this and clock it to help with the airflow through here. But I, I do have a shield coming. I found a shield and it, uh, it just clamps underneath here, three places, three legs. One will come out uh, right, in the, right in the front, one on each side, and it's adjustable in and out too. Those brackets are two-piece brackets that you can slide in and out to adjust for different sizes here. But So I've got it coming, but I'm not expecting to see it till uh, Monday. Give me a second, I'm going to move this prop out of the way. Oh, that baby's got some hard turning with that gearbox. So what's happening is the air's at 50 mile an hour, the air is uh, disturbing and being becoming turbulent in the meter. And what happens is that meter fluctuates high, fluctuates low, high, low. It's a real rapid succession of fluctuations. And what that does is the computer sees those numbers and it's trying to, it's trying to correct for those high readings, low readings, high readings. And then what happens is you end up, it ends up running rich, and you can smell it and you can hear it. So, so I can't do anything today with it uh, without that shield. Yeah, and this is a filter that's open in here too. It's pleated inside as well. But the shield's going to go on here. As soon as I get that, I'll bring it down and take it out and give it another test. Guy getting ready to go out do some. Oh, I think he just washed the mower off the mowing today. Uh, he's the one of the airport guys here. Uh, so, okay. Um, then the other thing I want to address is um, I'm sure it's from a lot of uh, new new uh, followers to my channel. They uh, Every video I put out, I don't know if the people have watched any videos prior to it or if it's the first video you're seeing, but every, at least a half a dozen times people are always asking me, so when's the maiden flight? When's the maiden flight planned? When you plan to fly it? How soon is you going to be ready to fly? You know, um, And if because they're new, I'm sure, and they haven't been back through my videos from at least four months ago when I brought this thing down here, um, I mentioned at that time that there is no set date on when this thing will fly. It will fly when it's ready, not when I'm ready. Um, right now it's telling me it's not ready because I have a problem here. And if you're, if you're a pilot or know anything about piloting an airplane, whenever you take an airplane up before you take off, you always do a mag check. You gotta run the engine up to a given RPM and turn a mag off, turn a mag on, turn a mag, you got two mags just left and right. So you turn one off, turn the other, check for an RPM drop and if you get more than like 50 RPM drop then you got a problem or if the airplane runs rough or something like that you don't fly it I mean so when you have a problem you don't fly it you pull it back into the hangar and you get someone to check it out so that's kind of where I'm at now but I'm pretty sure because when I was uh, pitching this propeller I was running this thing at full throttle in the yard for minutes at a time and the, air, the engine runs absolutely perfectly fine uh, last week was the first time that I was up to at least 50 mile an hour on this and I think that's a point where the airflow is causing a turbulence through the meter and screwing everything up. That's exactly what it acts like. I had that same problem when I was uh, tuning uh, Fox Body Mustangs, you know, the 86s to 93s and 94s and 5s and all that stuff. People will throw a filter like this on there and then when the electric fans or the fan from the engine starts hitting air onto that it screws up that meter reading and it goes berserk so I'm pretty sure that's all it is I ordered the shield the very that night I made the video talking about my problem but it's coming out of California and it's only a $15 piece stainless steel and screws so uh, when I get it I'm gonna pop this off I'm gonna pull this filter off take it home with me so when I get the filter shield I can uh, adjust it so it'll fit um, 
but that should take care of that and then I should be back to uh, testing and and see about trying to get this tail off but right now with that radio frequency the way it is uh, it's um, it's not good it's not good for the radio because you're losing you're losing your ability to transmit over a, a longer distance and uh, it could damage the radio because the power that doesn't go out to, out the antenna comes back into the radio so <clears throat> so that's enough for that I can't do anything more today. I'm going to have to go and do some read up and maybe order a couple more fittings so I can swap that part out in the tail and see if there's some way I can't do a quick change on it without pop riveting. I might be able to put um, rib nuts in there, little blind rib nuts, so I can screw it and unscrew it. It just needs to have a good, right now it's just aluminum popper if it's holding it all together back there. But again, with uh, all the new people, um, don't ask. Uh, I have no idea when the first flight's going to be. Um, I'm sure would like to get it in before winter. I can still come down here in winter. It's just going to be cold. They keep this place plowed all winter long, and I don't suspect we're going to see a lot of uh, uh, snow too early in the year. But once it gets really cold, I'm, I'm not going to be down here for shit. Um, I may come down and take stuff off the plane, take it home, and tinker with it. But as far as trying to get down here and fly in winter, no, nah, not unless it's a warm day nice clear sunny um, but so don't ask I don't know when the thing's gonna have its first flight it's not a planned flight it's gonna be one of those things I'm gonna be down here and everything's just gonna fall into place I'm not gonna have any problems and it's just gonna go and when it does you'll see it because I'll have my camera on on my uh, headset or whatever in the airplane I'm even thinking if I try to mount it like back here somewhere uh, you're not gonna see much it's it's gonna be in the way uh, so I'm gonna try something uh, No GoPros folks. Don't ask me if I can get a GoPro. It's I don't have the budget to uh, buy another camera like this camera I'm using right here is over $600 and the other camera I use on my headset that was over $300 I'm not gonna go out and buy another camera when I can use that little one you guys are just gonna have to settle for what I got um, later once the planes up and flying and I've got the money. I'll uh, I'll get a GoPro and see about mounting it somewhere, you know, wherever, to give you guys some views when it's flying. But for right now, you're just going to get an in cockpit view unless somebody happens to come down, and and will record me from outside the plane. So uh, I think that's about it. And then there's always a naysayer, and there's like, oh, this thing's never going to fly. He's just going to tinker with it forever. It's like, yeah, I got to tinker with it. I got to fix it. You got to remember, folks, this airplane is not your conventional airplane. That engine has never been used in one of these models before. This is a completely untested engine. It's never been used in this plane before. It's been used in other planes, but they yeah, usually run carburetors. Some had fuel injection, but uh, it's never been used. So that is completely untested part of the airplane, and that's you know that is crucial. And if it's not running right it ain't gonna fly folks uh, the landing gears hydraulic never been tested uh, the flaps no no war aircraft has ever had flaps so they've never been tested so I there's a lot of things on this build that uh, are new to this airplane so <clears throat> it's gonna take time folks I'm in no hurry uh, I think every one of these Corsairs ever built has had some kind of incident, runway incident. Most of them dealt with the uh, landing gear problems, gear collapse and dropping down and taking out the prop and tearing up the bottom of the wing and such. Uh, that was real common, but I don't, you know, I don't want to be another one of those statistics for these models. The other ones, you know, don't have much of a better track record either. Uh, as long as, you know, you run the O200 in there and a and the standard prop and and you don't have flaps or hydraulics you got all the gear hand crank gear and such in there then you got a you know different thing those those have flown but again it still boils down to ground handling most of these aircraft are damaged in ground handling either running off the runway and flipping over or what so I don't want to be one of them folks so you know don't ask I'm not gonna I'm just if you guys piss me off, I'm just going to delete your comments when I said I never delete comments. So uh, if you keep at it, then you're just going to get banned. Um, so watch the whole videos. Listen to what I'm saying. Uh, you know, someone's asking me, is it carburetor or fuel injection? And I'm sitting here in the last video saying, I'm talking about a mass air meter. Carburetors don't use mass air meters. Think, people, think. All right, well, I'm going to go. Uh, the helicopter's still here. Looks like they just put a new set of rotors on it. They got an old pair of rotors sitting back there. Looks like they just took them off. Uh, they're probably being sent out for 
overhaul check, whatever. So it's still here and it's supposed to be leaving. The other plane looks like it's gone. So, so I was easy to get this out today. I took that out of the hangar. It was tested. The meter was tested, you know, over 50 feet out there in a parking area. You got to get away from the, this ain't all metal building. It's an all cement block building, but there's a lot of metal in it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get home. It's all I can do today. i got to take my radio home. I did manage to get my new battery for it. Uh, the radio takes a, a battery in the back. So I'm going to take that home, put it in a charger, because the external power supply does not charge the battery in the aircraft. Oh, turn that off. So I'm going to take that out. i got to unscrew that connection. So, all right, folks, that's going to do it for this update. Um, tomorrow's supposed to rain. Monday's supposed to rain temperature right now is probably only in the mid 50s and it's going to drop right on down through into the 40s for uh, next week so someone i heard had mentioned snow but i haven't seen her day yet so all right i'm going to cut her off here folks and uh, as always feel free to leave any comments questions concerns appreciate everyone taking the time to watch these videos liking them and so forth so um, as soon as i can get something going here i'll uh, i'll get back over here and finish this thing up and uh, see if we can't get it out and see get some more testing in before the snow flies so for now that's going to do her i'll uh, catch you guys on the next one maybe uh tuesday or so i might have the stuff and bring it down here and and at least get out and do another test so all right folks that's going to do her uh i will catch you guys on the next one and uh, this is dino don out